Hi guys, I've been working on a diorama this week for a T34 tank that I'm building. The build's going quite slow, so I thought I'd do the diorama video first. Um, <clears throat> it's a weird one, this, because I, I kind of make a major change to it halfway through. But I thought I'd put it on anyway, just to show that, you know, um, I certainly don't think that I'm a, a YouTuber who, who puts only the polished... Uh, end result on and doesn't and hides the the mistakes that that happen off camera but in this case um this base just didn't it didn't work out so i got a bigger panel and started again so i've show the i'll show the build the build that didn't work out just for the sake of seeing the actual building portion of it which i carried over to the next diorama um yeah, you can see I've used matchsticks as kind of joists and I've used coffee stirrers um, as floorboards that are still hanging on. And then I've put um, strips of high-density polystyrene, <clears throat> high-density foam as kind of um, the between the floors. Of each of each room so it's the in, it's the internal part of a building where the front has been blown off uh, and it was copied off um, some photographs of buildings in Stalingrad so there's a there's a surface there that's blue and that's high density foam but the other two sides were white and they were just um, regular polystyrene and um, five mil uh, mount board foam so it was really just what I had, just what I had around. Um, so I've so yeah, I've put it on a bigger board, and I've just done a black wash with acrylic paints. Um, and I'm trying to build now a little bit of the surface up uh, on either side of the road. So if you've seen any footage of Berlin. At the end of the war, um, the roads had obviously been cleared by a bulldozer, um, and the and then everything was piled up at the, at the base of the buildings, and I'm kind of going for that a little bit. So just to throw into the mix, I've got an SDK Z two five one that I wanted to include as well. Now that model's not perfect. It, it, it was an okay built model. I think it was the very first one that I did after I went from planes to to vehicles. But I didn't like the paint scheme on it. Um, only for that reason, I'm going to do some snow effects on this diorama in the end as well. And if you've seen my videos from a bit earlier, um, my older videos I should say, uh, I used the bicarbonate solder and the baking powder, uh, just dusted through a tea strainer. Um, you know, obviously a obviously a layer of glue to give some snow effects. But I think it's still worth you building up the textures and having the rubble at the base of the building and having the different layers and the mud on the ground. Um, as as a, as good as it is, um, when you when you dust the snow over. As a, as as a fit as effective as a diorama is, before you dust the snow over, uh, makes it carries through to, to how interesting it looks when with a layer of snow. Um, so the ground was just broken up plaster. <clears throat> All that rubble that you can see at the base of the building, I had um, in different tubs and trays that have mixed plaster, a residue that had dried. Um, and I tipped it all into a bag and I crushed it up into varying grades. Um, and because that was white predominantly and my building was black, I needed to try and harmonize the two together. There's no use having a black building that has got all white rubble around it. Um, so there needs to be some kind of harmony between the two. So I've mixed um, house paint, emulsion, cream emulsion, or magnolia emulsion uh, with a little bit of um, yellow ochre 
and um, to do the surfaces of the building uh, so it just all ties up a little bit but then I'm going to put some washes on as well I'm going to dirty it I don't want it to be too clean um, I've used the usual wooden kebab skewer that I use to scribe brickwork into one of the surfaces into the high density foam um, plane wall <clears throat> so the plaster has been blasted off that that side um, Yeah, no special equipment, guys. I use the cheapest paints that I've got in the house. I'll try not to use the Vallejo on dioramas. And um, obviously using up crushed plaster like I've done, I had to put plenty of glue, diluted PVA, uh, over that pile of rubble. Just to make it realistic as well, I've put some wood planks in there to match the floorboards that have come down. Um... If you've seen the video recently that I did for the M48 build, I cast um, some plaster petrol cans in clay and um, a lot of the surplus plaster, the waste plaster that came from that, uh, has also made it into this little pile of, of rubble as well. I just try and make it interesting, just play with the textures, build it up and build it up and build it up, and then eventually, you know, you just feel like, you know, that's right, that's that's where I want to be. Just make sure you're keeping enough space for yourself uh, as, as I rolled through it. The spray on my spray bottle seems to have died a little bit. That's why I'm pouring the diluted glue, but... You know, get yourself a, an old detergent bottle or something with a spray gun um, and spray it and then you get a much more even uh, distribution. Um, I started off using PVA to stick the the building, the polystyrene building, which is three sided, obviously. And um, yeah, I went back to the drawing board on that because it kept falling apart, and super glue is no good either. It's, the foam seems to have too open a texture to respond well to super glue, and it was just laziness because I've got a hot glue gun. And it was and it was just shut away in a cupboard, so I was trying other options that were to hand. But um, in the end, pulled it apart, went back to the drawing board, hot glue gun, and the same for sticking it to the actual board, the actual surface. Uh, same with polystyrene. If you're using that for layering, for texturing, um, if you've not got a hot glue gun, just get one from a a pound shop or uh, the works in the UK. Uh, cheap stationers uh, and you'll get one for for, for pennies and um, I think cheap stationers do the do the glue for it as well I think if you end up going on Amazon or eBay you'll find you get um, you pay you pay more but it's one of them it's one of them few things you know I'm always on my I'm always trying to save money and um, do this hobby using my imagination rather than using my wallet but uh, there's a few things that I think you need to have in your in your arsenal, and uh, a decent glue gun, big massive tub of good uh, PVA, and then building materials like the um, the high density foam, uh, the packaging foam for 
for just building up a diorama surface. That's fine. Um, and then whatever you choose to use in terms of what I'm using at the moment is casting plaster, but I've used, um, you know, filler for cracks. I've used premixed uh, adhesive for tiles in the past. That's just very heavy and it seems to crack. Uh, the casting plaster is the best so far uh, because when it dries it doesn't shrink or crack. But um, yeah, you've got to get a few staples like this to have a decent go at it. But <clears throat> I don't like to daub too much paint on. I like to do thin washes, um, keep, it, keep it all wet, build it up as you go. I think I've used a combination of rust and brick red um, to do the brick colour. Plaster is very absorbent, <clears throat> so you know using a very wet wash kind of method of painting is a kind of a necessity. Um, else you'll just use lots and lots of paint. And whilst it's absorbent, it kind of takes the colour, um, takes a kind of well diluted colour quite well, really. You just gotta give it plenty of time to dry afterwards. And don't get too impatient. Like I say, guys, <clears throat> I'm trying to, throughout this, trying to harmonise the rubble and the building. The two things have to kind of reflect each other. Uh, and you can see there that I've done black washes on the building, now I'm doing black wash on the, um, on the ground. And there's even, there's even patches of the red brick colour on the ground. That's because I've, like, mixed, I've actually mixed the colour on the diorama you know trying to get a natural um, effect like that there's no there's no there's no harm done by like uh, having too much uh, too much interest and in color on the ground it ties the building and the ground together if there's if there's brick dust and, and so on uh, but at the same time yeah I'm considering that um, I'm going to put snow over it as well, so it's, you know, it's not, <clears throat> the, you can't do anything wrong at this stage. You're just trying to build up a texture that snow will look good on. So you might notice as well that I did, uh, two weeks ago, I did a napalm diorama where I used some burnt paper and ash in the, in the burnt part of the forest. And I've actually had some of that left over in a tray for the last two weeks and uh that's yeah i'm just i just don't like to throw anything away and um the benefit is 
that now I've been able to use that as well as a texture. So in amongst the floorboards and the bricks and the plaster and the dust, I've put some, um, some actual ash as well. And then when I sprayed that with glue and diluted it a little bit, it ran and be, just became like, like ink really. Uh, so it stained the other parts um, grey and it's quite a realistic tone to have. The height of this building doesn't make seeing it clearly on a video easy. Um, so I'm going to include some photos at the end guys just so you can see how it got on because the little video portion of it you probably wondered what each different section of it looked like so I'll put some some pictures on the end of the video and then typically uh, I put a few detailed photos on my Instagram as well um, so you know follow my Instagram if you if you're on there guys supermodel Dave subscribe and like uh, my videos uh, if you get something from it um, one thing I did think when I was building this I had um, some Tamiya brick walls and I thought that um, I might use them but I think the rough hand built stuff doesn't look good alongside the um, bought stuff I think you've got to either commit to one or the other um, because the, the handmade materials, they're always going to be a little bit rough and they look good by themselves but if you put them next to something made in a factory, um, it's not. It's going to look, look scruffy. <clears throat> so this is it really guys, just putting a layer of snow down, I'm just putting a layer of glue on and incorporating the blown up SDKFZ251 Hanno Mag <clears throat> uh, as part of the as part of this the diorama. Uh, I'll show you again when it's got um, the 34 T34 34 on it when it's built. Sorry that the trees have taken some of the focus away. Um, but yeah, check out the pictures. Let me know what you think, guys. Thanks for watching.